Interstate rest area and truck stop employees, what's the most bizarre story you have? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. Worked in a sandwich restaurant in a truck stop. One day several years ago on one of my days off, one of our maintenance workers, we'll call him Michael, was doing his rounds changing trash cans in the truck parking lot. Michael supposedly happened across a two or three foot length of PVC with caps on either end. For most people, alarm bells should be going off. Not for Michael, he started lightly beating things with it and tossing it on the ground, like one would with a small branch or something. Guy takes it into the truck stop and throws it away in the garbage can under the cash register and forgets about it. Several hours later at shift change, he's giving an informal report to the incoming shift manager and casually mentions that he found something like a pipe bomb or something in the lot, and that he threw it away under the register. Shift manager goes white as a ghost and says, there's a pipe bomb under the register? Michael says, yeah. The shift manager immediately vacates the premises, herds all the employees and customers out, and phones the authorities. The volunteer fire department which I happen to be a member of got toned out to block traffic into the parking lot and keep people at a distance. Sheriff's department shows up, realizes this is above their pay grade, calls the state police. They quickly realize the same and call in the bomb squad from the nearest major city and the ATF. All these important people are slowly gathering in the parking lot a healthy distance away from the building while I keep having to run back and forth across the parking lot in the 95 degree heat and turnout gear to explain to pissed off truck drivers that no they cannot go in the truck stop while there's a bomb inside, and no, I did not make that rule. The news ends up showing up, the ATF shows up. They suit up in bomb suits, walk in, carry the pipe bomb out, set it on the ground at the corner of two concrete walls of the building, run some detonation cord back to their truck, and set it off. The explosion was the size of a somewhat large firecracker. Michael got fired. Not an employee, but a frequent cross-country traveler. Weirdest was pulling up to a truck stop to fill up in southeastern South Dakota during the height of the Mayfly Hatch, millions of bugs all over. I started filling up and was getting ready to clean my windshield and I happened to look over across the way and there was some dude driving a big box truck in the diesel fueling area. He was scraping them off the front of his truck, and eating them by the handfuls. The days before cell phones were a thing. It was honestly the single most memorable thing I've ever witnessed in my countless cross-country trips since the late 90s. I just stood there, mouth agape, not believing what I was seeing. And every time I remember it, I'm sad I didn't have a cell phone to record it, because it was just so crazy. I'm sure mayflies are nutritious and I'm not knocking cultures that eat bugs. But mayflies smell like fish feces to me and eating them straight off the front of your car is just extra special. My friends and I went into a busy Japanese restroom at a tourist area. Aside from urinals, there were maybe 10 stalls and all occupied with 1 to 2 people waiting for each stall. I think tour buses had just dropped off. Aside from the occasional flush and sink sounds, the restroom is relatively quiet. No one is talking on phones or to each other. I'd say 25 to 30 people were in the restroom using or waiting on the facilities. One guy is aggressive farting and shooting loud nuggets into the bowl while grunting and panting. It's comically loud and abusive. Remember this is Japan and everyone is politely ignoring the thunderous sounds of defection. I'm trying so hard not to laugh. I hear a single snicker from another stall, and then I begin giggling loudly, snorting and such after I tried so hard to stay silent. Like cell phones ringing one by one in a disaster movie press room. Laughter spreads through the room as each person experiences exactly the same silliness. In a split second, the room erupts in way louder laughter than one would expect because everyone was trying so hard not to laugh. Other people laughing only made it more hysterical. When I came out of my stall, everyone was all smiles. Not one person waiting for a stall looked annoyed. Each of us in that room shared a bond over toilet humor which reached beyond nationality, age, or language. We experienced an immediate brotherhood and I will never forget it. Not one anymore, but when I was a maintenance worker for a truck stop, I got a call over the radio saying there were two women in the parking lot covered in chocolate. I thought, well, as long and they don't come into the store. I went outside to find two women, completely naked, covered in a brown substance, I hoped to God it was chocolate. The sheriff was called and apparently, they were both completely sober. They were there for a sorority thing. 
They were issued a ticket and it was, indeed, chocolate. Another one was a woman came to the counter and said someone stole her car. We called the sheriff and while we waited, I found she parked her car in the parking lot way in the back while she went to a nearby city with some girlfriends. When the sheriffs arrived, they couldn't find a trace of her car, broken window, skid marks, etc., and assumed someone must have had a key or the door was open or picked. He did some investigating around the spot and found her car in the ravine she was parked next to. Apparently, a truck backed up, didn't know it hit something, and pushed it off the embankment. Took two wreckers to pull it out. The person who pushed it off was never found. I have a ton of crazy stories from that job, and I only worked there a year. Those are just the two that stood out to me. I worked at a gas station or truck stop for over a year in high school. I have lots of stories. So, one time I'm closing up the station. I was starting to count the till, before I turn on the security system and leave. I've got a wad of 20s when four cop cars come ripping into our lot. I run to the windows, two cops go to the back and the other two position at the corners where it's hard to see them through the windows. Now, I'm an idiot high schooler, so I'm trying to look out the window grasping $300 in 20s, when I realize they've got weapons drawn and are trying to look at me. I put my hands up, cash in hand, and start yelling that I'm an employee. They let me unlock the door and come in. They were nice but clearly frustrated that I set off the alarm. I tell them four to five times that the alarm was not set, but they insist that I'm wrong and that they had a clear security report. So I took them to the panel, verified it was off. Then my smarts kick in, hey guys, what address was the alarm for? 303 Baker, why? That's not our address, that's ABC Supply a block north. They moved quickly to that business. I heard later that the safe was taken from that supply store. I worked overnights at a tuck stop and nights at a truck shop for a combined 10 years. When your stint was as long as that, bizarre means less and less. I've been propositioned by lot lizards, both attractive and not, propositioned by truckers, male and female, lost count of the piss jugs I've had to throw out, seen the boss getting busy with the help, seen drug deals and drug busts, petty thefts, and a truck crash into a diesel pump which left me smelling like fuel for a week. I also gained a short-lived stalker who settled for a guy with the same name, similar dress style, identical hair and beard style, with near identical likes, because if she couldn't have me, she'd settle for the next best thing. But what sticks out most are the following two instances. The first was when my town got from 7 to 11 inches of rainfall in a day. Our shop sat on the corner of an intersection, and myself and the technicians watched as idiot after idiot tried to get across the clearly flooded street, even with other cars flooded out and serving as warning signs. Also outside our shop were massive drainage ditches, and as the flooding got so bad that the ditches were full, the water started pulling cars into the ditches. An older woman got sucked into one of the eddies, and one brave mechanic raced out to save her. He dove into the churning water, pulled her out of her car, and got her to safety. When he came back, he had an utterly defeated look on his face. We asked him what happened, and he said, she yelled at me for not saving her groceries. The other was while I was employed at the truck stop. A friend and I were smoking outside and chatting with a non-stereotypical trucker. We'd been shooting the breeze for 10 minutes or so when he asked, y'all got any strip clubs around here? I said yes and started giving instructions on how to get to the first when he interrupted me. I'm not looking for any good looking women, I want them that are messed up looking, I likes them ugly. I looked at my friend and we laughed, clearly thinking it was a joke. It was not, the trucker got a little red and angry. I'm serious, I want them missing teeth, or a limb, or something. My buddy and I laughed harder, and the driver walked away, cussing us all the way to his truck. I didn't mean to kink shame the guy, but damned if it wasn't funny. I managed a truck stop an hour east of Winnipeg in the late 90s. This was around the time that Western Star came out with their one-way full window bunk. We had a regular base of clientele that would stop both ways. Surprised to no one, one of the regulars became enamored with one of the waitresses. She had complained to me about this driver two weeks before and I assured her I would deal with it if he continued to make her uncomfortable. On his return trip he stopped in, I watched, saw nothing untoward, he ate and then left for his truck. As the Western Star full window bunk has been mentioned, he was parked right in front of the restaurant's bay window. I am back in the kitchen helping with prep and I hear my name called and then I hear my name called. I walk out, 
Look out the window and see the sun hitting the bunk window of this truck at just the right angle to witness this dude yanking on his wiener so hard that I thought he was going to rip it off. All the while he's staring straight at the waitress through the window of the restaurant. Before I could react he realized that we could see him, jumped in the saddle, pants around his ankles and hightailed it onto the highway. I think he must have grabbed five gears inside 20 feet getting it going. We never saw him again. I didn't work there, but I was at a truck stop in West Virginia where a very fat trucker was trying to buy a Twix bar from the vending machine. He paid for it, but the bar got stuck on the last loop of the dispenser. So the trucker starts shaking the machine, don't try this ever, and it comes toppling down onto his legs, pinning him to the floor. Ah freak, he says nonchalantly. Everyone hears the crash and comes rushing over to help while a worker calls 911. It's at this point the trucker realizes that the glass on the machine has broken, so he reaches between his legs under the machine, feels around and grabs a Twix bar from the machine. This dude just lies there completely unconcerned about being pinned to the floor and starts eating the candy. A worker says he should try to stay still until help arrives but the trucker responds with get off, I paid for it already. By the time the fire department arrived and pried the vending machine off of him, this guy had eaten all the Twix bars in the machine as well as some Doritos and cookies. An EMT brought out a stretcher to take this guy to the ambulance, but the trucker says he has a deadline to meet and that the ambulance won't be necessary. He gets up, somehow relatively unscathed, hands the worker $20 and says thanks for dinner bro, then hops in his truck and leaves. My dad retold me a story that my grandpa told him today. We're guessing this took place in the 70s. My grandpa knew these two antique dealers, they were husband and wife. They drove themselves from a neighboring state to Texas to look for more stuff to bring back to their antique store. While they were in between towns they stopped at a rest stop. Eating lunch, looking at the map so they can decide where to go next, standard stuff. There was only them and one semi-truck. The driver of the truck approached them saying, Hey, my truck's broken down and I've been stuck out here for hours. I could really use your help. I need to buy or replace this part and if you take me there then I can get a taxi to bring me back. Yeah, sure, no problem. So they're in the van again, the husband's driving, wife's in the passenger seat, and the truck driver in the back. When they pull out of the rest stop the man in the back pulls a gun on the husband and says he wants their money. They kept most of their money in their glove box, so the wife reaches in with both hands. Money in one hand, a gun in the other. She hands the truck driver the money, and while he's distracted by the amount they had on them, she slid the gun into her husband's lap. I believe the husband turned around and shot the truck driver a couple of times, and the truck driver shot the husband. The truck driver died, and the husband lived but the bullet almost went through his right eye. So now they're in between towns, the husband has been shot, they have a dead man in the back seat, and now they have to find a hospital. An hour or so later, they find an emergency room and the wife says, I need you to help my husband because he's been shot, and I need you to call the police because the man who shot him is dead in the back of my van. So they take care of the husband, the police show up, they drag the body out, the wife explains the whole situation. The police go to the rest stop to check the inside of the semi. The actual truck driver was shot dead and was put back in the truck. They think that the robber didn't know how to drive it so they waited at the rest stop hoping someone would pull up in something he did know how to drive. So this is a story from my 90 year old grandpa, so I don't know how much he's telling tales, or how much this story has been exaggerated over the years. Either way it was crazy to listen to. I used to work at a video poker room in a truck stop. A guy comes in, already so sloppy drink that he can barely walk, thrusts a 44 ounce foam cup in my face and tells me to fill it with whiskey. I tell him, first, that would be $88. Second, I can't serve alcohol to someone who is already drunk, and third, I can't use an outside cup. He stops and stares at me for a moment, then thrusts the cup in my face and repeats himself. I tell him that it's not happening because I cannot for both legal and business policy reasons. He tries to get aggressive, but stumbles and falls over, so I tell the security guard who was about as useful a coloring book to a blind person to call the police. Dumbass was watching the whole thing and couldn't be bothered to even get off of his stool to do anything. And then, it happens, he pukes all over himself and the floor. When the cops arrive, we're all standing over this guy who is trying to get out of the puddle of puke and failing miserably, and is only succeeding in spreading it. 
The police decide to call an ambulance because he is far gone enough that he could have alcohol poisoning. I tell the security guard to go get some cat litter out of storage that we usually use to clean up fuel spills. Once he gets back, one of the cops got it in his head that we should take the guy out back and hose him off. So they put on rubber gloves and carefully half drag, half carry the guy outside, take everything out of his pockets, and use a hose to spray him off. So now, not only is this guy half dead from drunkenness, he smells like alcoholic vomit and spraying him off only made him smell worse because apparently he had soiled himself earlier and it had dried, so it didn't smell too terrible. Spraying him did wake him up though, so he starts trying to get up, but can't because he's sloppy drunk and isn't really coherent. The ambulance arrives, they strap him to the gurney, and drive him off. The guy never came back to the video poker room, so I don't know if he survived. What I do know is that the cops were obviously disgusted by the whole thing because I could see one guy gagging from time to time when I took a look to see if everything was alright. I was on a ride along when I worked for an international trucking company, and we pulled up at a large truck stop and had some dinner. After a while this lady comes in and starts talking to people, and it turns out that she is looking for her 13 years old daughter. She had run away from home and left a note saying that she was meeting a guy here, a trucker that she met on the internet. Long story short, everyone is talking about what they have seen, and the mother is barely keeping it together, when a waitress comes in to start her shift. We bring her up to speed, and the first thing she says in front of the whole group is if you were looking for a body, did anyone check the dumpsters out back? Needless to say, the mother then lost her mind, literally, she fell to the ground and pissed herself and was ugly crying so hard, you wouldn't believe it if you weren't there. Anyway it turned out that the truck driver was a sweet guy who was told she was 22 years old and just needed a ride home because she was broke. He worked out she was a child in about 0.1 seconds, and took her directly to the nearest police station. Worked at a highway fast food place for about 8 years on and off. One story has always been my favorite. The night the mop was stolen by the stone guy. The store was just outside a small town that day beside the highway. One night it was about 11 p.m. and it had been quiet for ages. We had started to shut down and clean the dining room. There was only me and one other person working. We had done about half and were taking a break having a chat behind the counter, killing time until we could officially shut and do the other half of the dining room. The front doors open and our immediate reaction is uck, customers. These customers stopped just inside the door and just stared. We realized they were locals and they were high as kites. One of them just stands in the doorway, looking around in stone wonder. The other sees the mop bucket we had left out there, in preparation for doing the other half of the dining room. He proceeds to pick up the mop, walk a lap around the restaurant dragging it behind him on the floor, leaving a huge wet dirty trail. Then he and his mate turn and walk out the front door with the mop. It was one of those moments where you honestly don't know how to react. We just looked at each other and pissed ourselves laughing. We then discovered it was a huge problem. Turns out that was our only mop. We had to leave the floor dirty. Worst part was the restaurant manager was doing open the next morning. We left notes everywhere explaining what happened, but I still got a call at 5 AM bitching me out for leaving the store in such a state. Even though she was the reason we didn't have a second mop, too expensive apparently. No one believed us, and we didn't have security cameras to back us up. Fast forward about six weeks. One of the locals comes to work, Thankfully when my manager and me were both working, and he walks in carrying a mop, the mop that had been stolen. He found it in the bushes on the back path from the rest stop to the town. Even now almost 20 years later, I'm friends with the guy I was working with and we often reminisce about the night the stone guy stole our mop, so random. Up there with the night the cat got stuck in my engine.